All right, so this is gonna be a relatively short video about a problem that a few people have been having. I think I've I only so far, including myself, can count about three people that have had this issue. But if it comes up, this is gonna be handy for you. And hopefully the sound is gonna be a lot better this time. I actually have a really nice uh, microphone that one of my subscribers bought for me. Unbelievable, Tascam, really nice microphone. So the audio should be much, much better. So th the issue that people were having is the bolt, the holes for the screws on your bumper were not lining up with your pint rails. You can take a look here, and I took some better pictures before I drilled it out. The factory screws that came in here were sideways. They were kind of sideways. And I think I heard some people saying, oh, the screws were, were put in wrong or whatever. But what I think what actually happened is the, the, the holes from the bumper, the plastic piece, it's called the bumper, we're not lining up perfectly with the holes in the rails. Now, one of the good things about the new design of the pint is that a lot of the holes where on the XR, the Plus, and the V1 used to have just threads tapped into the aluminum. These are a hole, but the threads are actually in the bumper. They're in your replaceable part rather than your rail, which is not ever meant to hopefully need to be replaced. So I'll go over quickly how to remove your bumper and get at this situation if you have this problem. And the reason that I am going through all this and having this problem is because, I mean, the screws were in, so it didn't look great to having the screws look a little bit sideways in there, but when I tried to put my float plates on, they wouldn't go. Now the float plates were cut correctly, the holes do line up, but because now we're standing off the board a little bit, sticking the screw in sideways like the factory did was not an option. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, but the float plate was not the issue. Now, unfortunately, because of that, it caused me to lose both screws for my float plate. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. Now, if you have this problem, first thing you want to do is remove those two factory screws that are in there crooked. And you will need to remove these two screws on the top of your foot pad. You'll understand why in a minute. Now, it's going to be loose. So, um... Also, I guess before you flip it over, it would have been a little bit more efficient. Remove these two screws from the underside of the bumper. Then when you come up, and if you remove these two screws, once you've removed those two, those two do attach to the front foot pad. So once you remove those, the only thing holding the foot pad on is these two screws. Remove them, and it'll just pop off. Now this is a little bit loose. I don't want to go flipping the board over and have this all janky hanging off here while I'm doing work under the board. So I'd rather put this back. Uh, but this is, you know, the bumper, if you notice, the bumper is nice and smooth. And since we don't have a front handle, if you try to pull this off from underneath, you have no grip. It's really hard to pull out. I don't know if you can. You might be able to cram something up in here and pull it off. But why bother? You remove those two little screws right there. Now you have this kind of easy grippy thing here. You're going to take your thumbs in the middle and your fingers on the bumper and do that. See how I use the combination of thumb push and finger pull and comes right out. So you look at those nice inserts there. Now that you have those inserts, if, if you screw up your threads, if you cross thread it or strip them, just replace the bumper, trash it. Nice replaceable part rather than having to do helicoils and all that, I've done them, I'd prefer not to. While we're here, take a look at your nice new con uh, control module. I think it looks like it is a lot more sophisticated in design and more ruggedized than the previous control modules. And there's your light bar right there. Paint controller. You can, it's translucent. You can kind of see the guts in there. And the, this is a metal bracket here attaching to the plastic top and metal bottom. Seems tough. I like it. I think that's an improvement to the old design. So once you've done that, put this back and you really only need to put one screw in it just to hold it in place. And so this picture is what it looks like before I widen the holes. And this is what it looks like after I widen the holes. Not a lot, not a huge difference. You don't need a huge difference. It was a small 
misalignment. It was not a really a big deal. And I looked at the bumper and I thought maybe I could trim the plastic back here or something, but that's just so much trouble. Then every time you replace your bumpers, you're gonna have to do that again. Deal with it at the source, deal with it here. You're not gonna affect the functionality of it since there's no threads in there anyway. So and here's a good look at the bottom of your control panel. So what I did, now you could probably just use a drill bit and do that and end up with a bigger hole, but you don't have a whole lot of metal between the hole and the inside the medial part of the board. So what I did is I took a Dremel tool and I, I love this thing. Uh, I tried the little grinding disc. Nah, it just wasn't, it doesn't cut it literally. And I happen to have this thing, which I think is for tile, for cutting a ceramic tile. And it made pretty short work of it. It did fine. If you don't have that, a drill bit would probably work. Just be careful. You really don't want to like break that edge over here just just grind it in there a little bit i'll kind of show what i'm not going to turn it on because it make a lot of noise and, it, and with one hand it's going to be hard but i'm kind of just gently opening up that hole towards the nose directly towards the nose that's all you need i'm not worrying about this angle here of the inset of the countersink because i'm going to use float plates so it's useless to me so i don't worry about that i'm just doing basically a straight direct towards the front and once you do that you can slide your bumper back in give it a couple taps taps right up and as you can see i'm lined up perfectly but yet my holes still weren't but now you can see they do have that room you can see they've got a little bit of room here's the long screw from float life i lost my two short screws unfortunately and they fit in just fine Whereas before, you were trying to get it in a little bit sideways and you could maybe get it in, but with the, ra with the plastic raising up on the float plates, it, it just wasn't happening. So that's how you can correct it and fix your problem. I need to locate some screws that are gonna fit. Then these are gonna go back on, put your screws back in, put it back together and you're all set. So good luck if you have that problem give this a shot if you think of something better let me know i'm always open to new ideas but if this works for you let me know in the comments i'd like to know that, that it actually helped but thanks again to the youtube subscriber that bought me this amazing microphone hopefully you guys can appreciate it. it sounds so much better than the other ones and with the wind even when we do moving videos it's going to be a lot better and i got these nice soft dead cat things that should hopefully help and uh, i'll see you in the next video